conferência de imprensa com Sebastian Fanceló neste Braga Open. Sebastian, welcome to the press room. I'm assuming we can do this in Portuguese? Not yet, not yet. yet. <laughs> Probably need a, need a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe we start with that. Tell us a little bit your story. Uh, you live here in, in Portugal since, I don't know, maybe one year ago? Exactly one year, yeah. I came here last year and uh, moved here with my girlfriend, moved to Lisbon. And um, yeah, we've been here for one year now. I've been practicing here, my base here, and uh, yeah. And, and why? Why did you move? Uh, my girlfriend got a job offer here. And decided to move here last year in March already, but then because of COVID our plans got uh, a little bit changed and um, and yeah, we decided to, to move here in August. And if I'm not wrong, it was in one of your first weeks as a resident in Portugal that you won a title in, in Stuval against Nuno Borges. So, so far so good for you here in our country. Yeah, the, the start was... Some other finals as well, of course. The, yeah, the start was amazing and uh, the end of last year was really good. And yeah, then this year we had the final in the Algarve, that was also really, really nice. The last few months have been a little bit rougher, but that's also a part of the tennis season that there's ups, there's downs, and uh, you have to deal with the, with the downs also. Yeah. You won a couple of the ETF, and uh, you made a couple of finals in Portugal, Stubal, Algarve. Yeah. Uh, you are, um, it's safe to say, you are half Portuguese already. <laughs> I feel out of heart, but I feel very comfortable and uh, there's something about the surfaces here in Portugal that usually suit me. Yeah. I enjoy being on a little bit slower hard court and um, yeah, maybe there is something something about Portugal that I really like. Yeah. And where did you train uh, daily or where, where is your base? So my base for a while was uh, close to the airport at the university, that's okay. where my, my coach has his uh, academy. He just recently moved, so we'll be now in Java, so we'll be in the, with, the, yeah, with the Federation trains. And you train with Portuguese players uh, daily? Yes, yes, usually with uh, all, all kinds of Portuguese players, sometimes with guys from the Federation, like Jao Casal or Luis Faria, and uh, sometimes even I coach Manel as a few players also. And um, yeah, the, the nice thing in Portugal is that uh, you always find a way to meet up with some players, and um, yeah. So what can you tell us in Portuguese? Oh my god. <laughs> you know, I was talking to my girlfriend last week and we just moved, so we're not in the city anymore, we're a little bit outside in uh, Paret. And uh, now we realize how embarrassing our Portuguese is, because for one year we didn't really need it. Uh, in the city everyone speaks such good English, you know. Ah, so just a little bit the, the typical things. Uh, bon dia. Um, bon tarde, all these things, but unfortunately, uh, Spanish is a lot better for me, but Portuguese has still need to work on me. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not wrong, you went to college in, in the States, you had mm -hmm. an experience. How was it for you? Amazing, amazing, yeah. I, uh, yeah it's quite a, quite a few years back now. I graduated <laughs> in 2013, and I, I stayed even after I stayed there quite a long time because. Um, there's something about the states that I really liked. I will also I went to college in, in California, so you have great great weather, great uh, great venues. Um, yeah, there's something about college tennis being part of a team that I really uh, in, in enjoyed because in tennis you're very lonely for for most weeks. You know, you try to build a team around you, but in the end you're still on your own quite a bit. And college tennis for me was four years of just being surrounded by. A, by a group of guys that I really enjoyed and really had, had fun with and um, that made the experience great. And, and what can you tell us about the, the Portuguese generation that you train daily, Tiago, Luis, what can you tell us about these young Portuguese players? I think the, the work ethic here in Portugal is, is very good. I think um, if I compare it even to back home in, in Germany or even in the States, I think uh, the Portuguese guys, Tiago, Luis, they all work very, very hard. You know? Uh, that's one of the, the bases that you need to becoming a, a, a tennis professional. Um, yeah, there's times in, in Germany or in other countries where maybe I practice with guys that aren't super motivated or you can just tell sometimes the practice is not as fun and especially about those two guys, uh, we always have really good practices and I do see them work very, very hard. 
and you won a title alongside uh, Cabral last week. Yes. yes. Uh, how it was uh, that that week? Oh, it was it was amazing. I'm I'm not uh, I wouldn't call myself a double specialist, so um, I haven't uh, I haven't won a whole lot of titles in, in doubles. And uh, Cabral to me is a, is a fantastic doubles player, and uh, he he helped me out quite a bit. And uh, I think our our games complemented uh, each other very very well. And, You play mostly 25 k's in, in challenges. What are your goals for the, the rest of the season, and where do you see yourself, or would like to see yourself in maybe the next one? I would. Uh, one one of the goals that I haven't reached yet would obviously be to get into a qualies of a of a Grand Slam. I know, um, to be honest, there's not a whole lot of time left for this year. Um, my goal for now would be to get within somewhere of the top 350. Um, for this year, and then obviously next year, uh, managed to get into a Grand Slam qualies, which uh, I've been close to before. I uh, think my highest ranking was about 280, 290. But um, but yes, that's I think the, the goal that every every tennis player goes for. For that goal, uh, these tournaments are more important because uh, they get more and more points. Uh, is this a kind of additional pressure for, for you to? To get the, these points? Yes and no. I I've had a had a rough couple of uh, last few months. I, I got COVID at the beginning of August, so that took me out for quite a long time. And um, I put enough pressure on myself already in the last two futures that I played in Sintra, where things really didn't go well at all. And um, this almost this week, I almost uh, was able to take the pressure out of it because I, I realized it's a bigger tournament, I realized there's more points, but I also realized that if I put this kind of pressure that I did the last two weeks on, I don't, I don't perform well. So um, yes, it would be nice because I know I can get a lot more points here, but uh, I also know that I play the, the, my best when I'm, when I'm having fun and when I'm uh, trying to enjoy it. And uh, yeah, that's where the, the pressure doesn't really help. We still have uh, two or three more challengers this year. Are you trying to to, to enter these tournaments? I guess. Yeah, for sure. I'm close to entering for uh, SIF yeah. for next week, so I, I think I will get in. Hopefully, I will, I will get in and play for sure. Then I'll probably play the few of the 25s that are still in Portugal here. And then, yeah, I haven't focused on the schedule yet for November, but I know Maya is still going on. I, have, I don't know if there's another one also, but um, but yes, I'm any. Any tournament where I can drive to is uh, <laughs> is, is nice. <laughs> and what is your best surface to play? What what surface do you like most? I usually enjoy playing more on hard court. I think it, it suits my, my my game better. Um, I like to be close to the baseline and uh, attack a little bit more and play it just a little bit uh, more difficult. Having said that, I I have had some of my best uh, victories in my career on on clay. So sometimes. I don't know, I think sometimes it's just a confidence thing. If you feel confident, you play well on, on any surface. But generally, I look for more uh, out of my foot. Maybe the last one. Uh, are you, what your, or are your connection to the German tennis? Are you, are you keep in touch with, with the German players? Or what, uh, what, your, what is your connection to the German tennis? Um, yeah, in, in general, um, I think the tennis world is very small. So you do meet uh, players everywhere, and uh, in general, I get along very well with the German players. I haven't been in Germany very much in the last ten years, probably. And uh, so whenever I, I see them, I obviously we get along fine. Um, but yeah, because I'm not, I haven't been in Europe much besides uh, this this past year. So the, I sometimes have an even stronger connection with some of the uh, American guys since I've been there a lot the last seven, eight years. But um, not like uh, one of the German guys, Peter Heller, he's playing here and he's a, he's a good friend of mine. And in, in general, I, I have uh, another German player, Lukas Gerich, who I usually travel with quite a bit. So um, yeah, in, in general, I, I get along very well with the German players. Yeah. But, but is it, it is a dream to play maybe the Davis Cup uh, one day? For me, any kind of team event uh, would be a be a dream. Yeah. I mean, even though I've lived in all kinds of places in the last 10 years, I still consider myself German and um, 
Yes, I need to play in the Davis Cup or even to represent uh, my country in an Olympic event would be a would be a huge dream. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Sean. Obrigado. <laughs>